Good day, flight simulators. Today we're going to try a flight with the Diamond Aircraft DA-62. And we are going to fly to from Memphis to Little Rock. Just take a look at the weather. There's the weather right now. So we've got, we're going to have some rain. Uh, we'll probably get into as we approach Little Rock. So let's go to Little Nav Map and create a flight plan here. So I'm going to hold my mouse over uh, Memphis and uh, you can see that the runways preferred are 18 right, 18 center, 18 left. So that's 1 8 right that I'll probably take. And you can see that the wind is not too strong. It's only four knots out of 150 under the NOAA station METAR data provided. So I'm going to pick 1-8 right for a departure, but I'm also going to pick a gate. So I'm just going to zoom in here for a second. And um, so we're going to select that runway, but I want to pick one of these parking spots up here, which means we would probably go down like here to get to our runway if they give it to us, which isn't always the case. So I'll set that as the departure and I can set the runway up here for departure or you can just right click on the airport um, symbol and I'll, I'll go there and we'll do 18 right 1 8 right there we go so now we've got that and we can also right click on the airport icon and show departure procedures and you need to pick one for uh, SID for uh, 1 8 so if you click on this, you can see what it's going to look like. And you can see it would fly out this way. So um, I'm going to enter that, see what happens. Okay, so now I need to go over here to Little Rock. And I need to do the same thing at Little Rock. I need to hold my mouse over the icon of the airport to see what the weather looks like. So, uh, it's blowing at 09 uh, and it is blowing at 8 knots. So, and the runways preferred are 4 left and 4 right. So, I'm going to pick uh, an ILS runway because I want to do an ILS approach. So, this is probably 4 right here. So, let's take a look at that and see. Okay, so I'm going to um, select that and write down the uh, frequency, which is 11130. It's a nice thing about little nav map is that, you know, you can hold your mouse over things and you get a lot of information. And uh, that's about what we need to do. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to um, select by right clicking on that as our destination. And I'm also going to uh, right click. We'll do it a little different this way. We'll select um, a runway. And we said four right. So we're going to pick four right. And now I'm going to right click and I'm going to take a look at arrival procedures. And we're going to need four right ILS. So let's click on this and see. That's four left. Let's see this one. That's four right. So there's what it looks like. You would come in from Barbell. So I'm going to collect that because it's or select that because it's an ILS and it's it's uh, runway four. So that's what we're going to select. Getty. And we're going to insert it. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, the altitude. I don't know if we need to be flying at uh, 6,000, but I'm going to try 4,000. And I am going to see if I can actually. So you can see once we 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 now have waypoints here and our departure and arrival airport codes and we have the runway but uh, I'm going to see if I can do a calculation 
by clicking on here at 4,000 feet. I'm just going to hit adjust. Now, if it doesn't like it, it's going to adjust it. Uh, I'll give you an example. If I did 5,000, it adjusted it to 6,000. But uh, let's see if they like 4,000. So I'm going to hit adjust. And it didn't do anything. I'm going to calculate. And it calculated a flight plan. So obviously, uh, with a little nav map, there weren't any real big issues. Um, I don't really like the way it does this this waypoint here. It's kind of strange that you would fly into that and then have to go back out. But um, I got a feeling if you import that into a Microsoft flight plan, it's not going to work. Um, you know, uh, it, Microsoft Flight Plan sometimes creates its own approach. So I'm going to delete this one. Um, you can remove it. And uh, let's see where we are here. We can select a waypoint out here, but I'm not sure it'll take it. How about this one? See if we can insert that. We add the waypoint, so we're going to fly out here, and it's a better approach, but, you know, that's what I would pick, but let's see what Microsoft Flight Sim does. So we're going to save that, and then we're going to export it as a Microsoft Flight Sim flight plan. So Memphis to Little Rock, save. Now I'm going to close the, this down. We can leave this one up for now. I'm going to downsize this screen here a bit so you can see it if we need to during flight. But you got to grab onto the edge there and shrink her down. And then I'll close this window after just by clicking on this. So I'm just going to move it over for now. And um, what I'm going to do is go uh, back here. Once I click on here, this little map, map window disappears. So, you click on space more and load save and then you click load from this PC. Then you have to go to your folder and um, Microsoft Flight Sim. This is just a folder I created and it saves it there. So now we need to look for Memphis right there. Bring that into this window and say open. And then we have to look and see what we got. So, you know, this is very similar to what we created, but doesn't look identical. So, um, I find quite often Microsoft Flight Sim will make some adjustments, but I'll accept that if it works. And there's all our waypoints. There's our ILS approach, um, departure, etc. Okay, so let's hit fly you can look at your nav log just quickly i'll show you so it shows us flying at 4,000 feet and there's our different uh you know top of climb etc and our different waypoints and uh estimated times altitudes so we need to be at around 3,500 and 2,300 feet altitude when we get to um, Getty. Okay. Let's just click on this screen. Get rid of the nav log. And then we have to hit fly. So the Diamond DA62 uh, is a five to seven seat twin engine light aircraft produced by the Diamond Aircraft Industries and it was first announced in uh, March of 2012. The prototype designed as the DA-52 first flew in April of 2012 after six months development. In uh, 2014 June it was announced that the production aircraft would be designated as the DA-62. So the DA-62 development team is headed by Diamond Managing Director Manfield Zipper. It is based upon the fuselage of the single-engine Diamond DA-50. 
but with two Astro AE 300 diesel engines burning Jet A fuel. Company CEO Kristen Dries indicated that the engines may be replaced with turboprops at that time. So here's our aircraft. It's a beauty and it's fun to fly. I'll just take a nice look at it before we uh, take a look at the extensive checklist that comes with this aircraft, which, which I do like. Some of the Microsoft Flight Sim aircraft do not have an extensive checklist. So I hope we get the um, departure runway that we asked for. So let's uh, hit fly, ready to fly. And now we'll take a look at this checklist. So I'm going to bring it up by going to the overhead toolbar. And so you can see what I mean. The checklist goes all the way from pre-flight inspection all the way down to parking. So I'm going to start with this one. And this is a great way to familiarize yourself with where things are inside the aircraft during a checklist. Um, the checklist is provided by Microsoft and it is for Microsoft Flight Sim only. It wouldn't be as extensive probably as in the real world, but nevertheless, um, it's fun to do. And uh, in the real world, uh, pilots and co-pilots go through these checklists. They don't just memorize everything uh, because if you go just purely by memory, you're going to forget to do something. And sometimes that can be critical. Um, and even cause a serious air crash. So let's go parking brake and by clicking on that I highlight it and if you go to evaluation parking it'll brake. take you to where the parking brake is. Now the parking Fuel brake selectors. needs to be set. So we're going through a few things here in the checklist. Uh, so this is the fuel selectors check on. So uh, we need to put those on. You could do that yourself Check or on. just auto-complete. It's up to you. Alternators, uh, I'm going to put them on. Check both on. Pito heat. Uh, I'm going to put I'm going to put it on. Engine master. Oh, oh. Check I'll, both off. I'll put it off. <laughs> Avionics master for now. switch. Check off. Gear selector. Yeah. Check down. Yep. Flap selector. Check up. Okay. All electrical equipment. Off. Elect. Master. Okay, so we can put this on. On. Avionics master switch. We need to put that on. On. Fuel quantity. Nassar 616 is clear to Adam. So that's a matter of checking your fuel quantity. Now here I I have to press one of these keys. Master. Nassar 616 cleared to Adams Airport as filed. Take off runway 18 right climb Turn and maintain 4,000 feet. Departure on 124 decimal 15 squawk 0077. Elect. Master. Elect. Master. Elect. Master. So, uh, the control stick, uh, you want to make sure it's free. And not restricted. So I'm just Free do and that. correct full travel. Okay, so that page is complete. Now the um, the P tote uh, or P tot heat, I will put that on. Um, probably in one of these checklists or or for the flight. So let's just go through now, starting uh, before starting the engine, and we're going to. Check some of these Power items. Levers. Idle. So that's just with my joystick. I'm just going to. Idle. Parking brake. Set. Avionics master switch. Okay. So that needs to be off. Check off. Gear selector. Check down. Mm -hmm. Alternators. Check both on. Fuel pump LH slash RH. Check off. Elect. Master. Okay, now we're going to turn this back on. on. Again. 
So that completed the uh, sort of a pre-flight inspection uh, before you start the engines. So now we're going to go to starting the engines. And we should get our avionics coming up then. So first of all, we're going to do our strobe lights. Strobe lights ACL. On. Engine master. On L. Annunciations. Check L engine glow on. Start left button. Press as required engine start. Annunciations slash starter. Check off. Annunciations slash oil pressure. Check OK. Idle RPM. Check 710 plus or minus 30 RPM. Opposite engine start. Repeat procedure. So after starting the engines, let's go through this avionics master. Let's just avionic check that. master on. Okay, we got our Memphis Ground SR616 with Oscar ready to taxi IFR. Contact Memphis Ground SR616 with Oscar ready to taxi IFR. Contact Tower 1118. So you can just take some of these items, and you can auto complete some of these items. Memphis Ground SR616 with Oscar ready to taxi IFR. So we got our As runway. required less than 50% if I'm not warm. As required less than 50% if I'm not warm. So I'm putting the peat dot on now. So you can auto-complete that if it gets hung up. Flight instruments and avionics. Okay, so here I'm just going to click on this or hit enter. So now we've got our map screen up on our multifunctional display. So we can see now our fuel, RPMs, oil pressure. There's our fuel there. And our coolant temperatures. There's our RPMs. Okay, so uh, that's good. I'll tick that. Set as required. Strobe lights. Strobe lights. So once again, it shows you where they are. Position lights, landing, and taxi lights. As required. Trim. Set to T slash O position manually. So that's where it had to be. So that's done. And uh, these here, we're going to turn on taxi. And the landing lights, we can turn that on when we get out to the runway. So, uh, this is taxi now, so parking brake release, brakes, uh, flight instrument, fuel pumps, etc. So, let's just go through those. Um, evaluation. So, it's on right now. Release. Brakes. You can just uh, use your brake on your joystick if that's the way you're braking or your Xbox controller and you can uh, they look like they're working fine test on moving off flight instrumentation and avionics so you just check check that. for correct indications mm -hmm. fuel pump LH slash RH check off fuel selector now, fuel selector, um, they're going to do a crossfeed, so I'm going to auto-complete that, and you can see LH what helps. Slash RH. Fuel selector. So I'm going to auto-complete that again. On LH slash RH. So if you're not sure sometimes what some of these are going to mean, you can actually do the auto-complete, and then you'll learn it for the next time. So before takeoff, we're going to taxi out now. Um, so this will be what we do before takeoff. So I'm just going to bring that up. I'm going to tune them. Ground. And, uh, 
yeah, nothing's happening when I do that. So I'm just going to start uh, heading out. Uh, so going to we got so I'm just going to shut down that for now and zoom in just so we can see where we're at here on the little nav map there's where we're departing from so there's where we are so um, if I go here I can turn back this way as you can see the uh, train is a little bumpy <laughs> not a hundred percent flat so that's probably just the way it's rendered by Microsoft Flight Sim. So we should be coming up to runway 18, right? Right here. So a nice thing about little nav map, if you didn't know where you were going, this would certainly help. So there we go, runway 18, right? So at this point we have to uh, Memphis Tower Ness Air 616 ready know. for departure runway 18 right IFR to Adams. Ness Air 616 hold short runway 18 right. Traffic is generic on short final. Hold short runway 18 right Ness Air 616. Takeoff runway 18 right Nasser Okay, we're cleared for takeoff, so just going to roll up here and uh, do another little checklist. Okay, let's go through this checklist. So this is before takeoff. So this brake, brake should be set. Set. Longitudinal trim. Set T slash O. Right there. Fuel selector. Check on LH slash RH. Directional trim. Centered. Flaps. So, I'm going to put the flaps down to take off, T-O. There's for landing. And 136 knots is uh, probably when they have to come up. So I'm just going to autocomplete that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that just went... Uh, Check function and indic, set T slash O. Flight controls. Um, let's make sure they work fine. So, oh, auto complete. So, check unrestricted free movement. Landing light. So, we're going to shut off the taxi. Or, Parking or, brake. <laughs> didn't give me a chance. I'm going to go back up here and put the landing lights on. Yeah, I, I did get them clicked actually. So, parking brake, we're going to have to release that. Release. And, uh,. We should be able to roll. Let's just take a look at normal takeoff checklist. Transponder as required. That's already set for us. Um, 
and our frequency uh, this nav frequency I'm going to set that once we get flying I'll show you how to do that and power levers max elevator trim neutral rudder so we're set to go landing gear uh, up and flaps up after we get uh, climbing so I'm just going to close that right down now and same with this so you can see what's going on here and I'm going to go full throttle and release the parking brake. Let's see if I can center us up on the runway here a little better. So there's our rotation speed. You can see it. It's around 80. Just going to gently pull back on the yoke. I'm using a Logitech 3D Pro joystick. So let's go outside and have a look. Try and get behind the aircraft so you can see what it looks like. Back off a little bit. So I'm going to bring up the landing gear by pressing G Golf on the keyboard and bring up the flaps using my joystick. So now once I go inside here, I have to put on the autopilot. And now, Memphis departure Nassair 616 is passing 1,100 feet, climbing 4,000 feet. And I have to put on vertical speed here, and I have to go up. I have to set my altitude. to uh, 4,000 I think we said. So we're going up, so let's just increase that a little bit here. Yeah, I don't want it too much. So we have to make sure that's on. can see what it's it's indicating 300 400 500 and we don't want to go too quickly on a climb so you want to make sure you have your flight director on as well your autopilot uh, your nav so it's following the flight plan here it's showing GPS and everything up there GPS autopilot vertical speed up etc so everything is looking good there so what I want to do is see if we're following our flight plan. So this is the multifunctional display screen and it looks like we are following our flight plan quite nicely. I'm just going to leave it at that. If it wasn't following the flight plan, I'd ask it to fly direct to that. So if you click on that, uh, you, can, you can do the direct to button here. And you can click on that and, and press act. I'm going back to flight plan. I'm going to clear that. I'm not going to do that because everything's going fine. But I just wanted to show you if you find yourself flying off in this direction or in the wrong direction, uh, which can happen, that's how you get back on track. Nav. Um, we said the nav frequency was one 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 decimal three zero, and quite often it's uh, it's it's set up here but not activated. And if I right mouse my right mouse button and I click, you can see it's gone down to nav two here. And if I right click, it's back up to nav one. And if I actually swap, it'll go over. Now you change the frequency by using these knobs. So we we need one eleven, uh, which is already set up down below. So. If I use the large knob, it changes the larger numbers, and the smaller knob changes the smaller. So now I'm going to swap. So that's the active frequency now, which is the active frequency for the runway we're headed to. So as long as these things are looking good, uh, we're on uh, autopilot following our flight plan. So this has got to say GPS, not ROL or LOC1. Now, 
I'm going to show you how you change this uh, CDI. That's LOC1, LOC2, and there's GPS. If you want it on GPS. Your maps, you can actually change the maps. Uh, so you get some uh, options. Now for your primary flight display, you can, you can add uh, wind, and you can select the option you want. You want to see option one, two, or three. So you can see with option three, we see the wind and we see uh, its uh, heading that is coming out. Okay, so we're following the flight plan pretty good here. So now I'm going to go back and hit. If you want your bearings on for nav one or nav two, you can click those buttons. So ILS for nav one, it'll show you uh, that. And it'll be on in our heads up display outside as well. So there's a view from outside. We're approaching 4,000 uh, feet altitude. So this is our uh, speed indicator. That's our true airspeed right there, and there's our indicated airspeed. Here we have our altitude indicator, and there's our barometric pressure. So just going to press B on the keyboard, Bravo B, and that will give us uh, a correct altitude once that barometric pressure is set. So let's go back here and take a look at these soft keys again. So this, yes, will give us our nearest airports if we want to divert. This will give us if there's any alerts. Uh, this will, this is our transponder which has already been set for us. But you can click on uh, that to send an ident uh, on your transponder to identify your aircraft, a little additional information for ATC. And you can actually uh, uh, change your um, transponder. This is how you would enter it if you wanted to enter a different one. But this is the correct one, so we'll leave it there. That was already set for us. So um, that's about it for there. Uh, let's just take a look uh, at screen uh, control 2 on my uh, keyboard brought up this screen. So this is actually your multifunctional display screen. So here we can bring up our flight plan, uh, a map, and you can see we're not following right along that line. We've got to check and make sure we're on nav. So nav has gone off, autopilot's on, flight director's on, and uh, vertical speed is off now. So we just, all we need to do here is turn the nav on. Nav on and see what happens. Good day. Going to 118.625 Nasser 616. Memphis Center Nasser 6164,000 feet. Nasser 616, Memphis Center Altimeter. Okay, so generic eight, hotel tango, contact Memphis. Turning the Avalon one, didn't make any difference, still on roll, so I'm gonna go back to this flight screen. So that's where we need to go. So I'm going to do fly direct to that waypoint. It's flashing there, I'll say enter. One, three, five, three, and then I'll activate. Eight, okay, so that got us back on course again. You can see we're back on GPS here. So when I was demonstrating some stuff to you on multifunctional display, in order to get things back on track, you have to get back onto GPS. So um, maybe even when I clicked on this uh, CDI button to LOC, LOC, to show you that. Um, if I was on the ground, it wouldn't make any difference, but it might have shut the nav off.
So basically now, uh, it's just a matter of letting the autopilot do its work. Now here's uh, something else I want to show you, the heading bug here. If you want to line that up with your aircraft in case uh, you do want to go onto heading mode and not have to scroll, because uh, you would have to scroll this bug to move the scroll the style to move the heading bug. You can just right click on it and it'll shoot to the top and then and line up with the nose of the aircraft. So you can see the wind here has changed. It's coming out of that direction, but it's not very strong. It's coming out of 17, 17 on the compass, or 20 roughly, so gusting not really much. One to two knots. You can take this map off if you want by clicking here and turning off the map. Alrighty, uh, let's take a look at our barometric pressure again. And what I'm going to do is walk you around the uh, aircraft just quickly to look at some of the stuff. So we look, the nice thing about doing the checklist is you can uh, see where some of these switches are. It'll take you and show you. Um, these lights are all on when uh, all the landing gear is down. So you should get three green lights. So right now the landing gear is up. And it even tells you uh, what V speeds you need to be at in order to put that landing gear down. So control one will bring up this screen right here, which is your primary flight display, which has your nav frequencies and your comm frequencies. There's a timer you can set here if you want, United using that soft key. There's our time, universal standard time right there. There's our temperature outside. So here we can see we're headed to that waypoint. Its distance is 4.5 nautical miles and the bearing to get there is 245 on the compass. Okay, I'm going to go control 2 now. This is our multifunctional display screen. So here's our um, engine loads percentage here. Everything looks fine. Uh, this is our RPMs. You don't want to get them too high. Cut back a wee little bit. You don't want them into the red. And our fuel flow. Uh, right there, it's looking good. And there's our oil temperature, oil pressure, our cooling temperature, our fuel temperature, and our fuel quantity in the left and right tank. And then there's an auxiliary fuel. Uh, looks like we have nine and nine gallons. Okay, so you can take a look at your engine. These are soft keys would allow you to do some various functions, your map options, for example. Uh, I'm going to put on the next ride. Well, that is on. So that should give us some weather if we have any uh, thunderstorms or what have you. So I'm just going to go back. Um, so engine will give you some information on your engine if you want to uh, have that on. So it looks like right now we're following our flight plan pretty good. I'm going to go back and uh, map options. I think I've already looked at that. So I'm not going to go into these ones right now. So that was control two. Control three is going to bring up uh, your throttles, your parking brakes, your rudder trim, Control 4, Our tank fuel, control, auxiliary pump, transfer, if you want to transfer fuel from one, one to the other. Memphis Center, Skywest 529 or 5 is at flight level 345, descending flight level 340. Control 6, 
and we'll look out the window to our left engine, control 7, the cockpit, control 8, view from the uh, right side out the window. Control 9 gets you back here. Control 0 uh, doesn't uh, indicate anything. So you can also use your mouse and just scroll. See if I use my uh, Alt key and arrow key. So you can get a little bit of a look at the back. Door handle. Descend and maintain one zero thousand feet air share tree tree five. So let's see if we can go back any further. Maintain present heading and altitude generic aid hotel tango. Generic aid hotel tango. So we've got a configuration here generic for aid, looks like two people back here. Three, so five seats, and let's just turn around here and look out the back where the passengers are. What do we got here? Maintain present heading and altitude. Generic aid, Hotel Tango. So a little difficult to read what that says. So now I got to get back to the front. So Alt keys to move over. Alt and arrow keys, I should say, and then Alt and like that to move forward, and then the Shift key will bring you up or down like that. So I need to get over in position, and now if I press Control 1, I should be okay. You can adjust things slightly with your you scroll on that, which is kind of nice. So there's our weather that we're going to come into. So I'm just going to back off again. So we should have some rain when we get there. There's our aircraft, so we're getting pretty close. We're going to have to listen to what they're telling us as we get closer. So there's the weather. We're flying into. Uh, take a look outside. Get a look at the aircraft. So you can see the P-Tots. Uh, this tail number, uh, you can put your own tail number on, whatever you want. You can even put your name on it if you want, in the settings for when you select the aircraft. I know at times uh, air traffic control interferes with what I'm trying to say, but I do like it on, it's, it's kind of more realistic. And also, they do give you altitudes for approaching if everything's working. We're hearing other aircraft here in the background. So let's take a look at little nav map. You can see. Yeah, you can see the uh, terrain is really beautifully rendered by Microsoft Flight Sim, and I like the way they do the weather. Let's take a look at the weather. Okay, so let's just. Okay, so you can see uh, 
right about now during the flight. And so this is uh, Sunday the 24th of September at 10, 10 a.m. You can see that uh, most of the weather is uh, south of us. So we're going to be okay flying in here. And let's take a look at the little nav map and just see where we're at here. Okay, so... It doesn't look like uh, this flight plan is going to be exact, but we are tracking this pretty good. Let me just see. Uh, I'm going to bring up the flight plan in here. Okay, let's have a look here. Let's just zoom in a bit. Yeah, so... Perhaps it's fairly accurate. This this waypoint here. Let's see if we got that A little nav map. United One Tree Eight Four traffic is nine o'clock four miles at flight level tree one. I'll bring up the flight plan here. Report them in sight. Yeah, I don't see that waypoint. So, you know, they've introduced some of their own waypoints into our flight plan, but that's okay. A lot of this they've brought in anyway. See, we're headed to that waypoint and this one. And this one. So, they're in there. But I do not believe they didn't take this waypoint. You see this waypoint's there. Now the aircraft is centered because I have uh, center aircraft on. So if I take that off, then I can move somewhere else. This allows the aircraft to show up. So if I want to move now over to here, it won't fly back and center the aircraft. So then you can you can look around for waypoints to see actually where you're headed. So this Delta one's in. Let's go back to the aircraft again Today. and uh, Monty. I A F it says. Now I'm not sure if that's a waypoint or not. Let's have a look. Okay, so we did a search um, using user points and we typed in Monty and it showed us where it's at. So I suspect after we get here we're going to fly out to here and then maybe direct to this waypoint and not use this one. So I just added that to the flight plan so it doesn't hurt to do that. It's not going to affect anything but it will maybe let us see where we're going. So we've been checking things during the flight to make sure everything's going okay. On our multifunctional display screen, everything's looking fine. There's no warnings or alarms. And we can see where we are in our flight plan here. So let's take a look at that checklist um, that they provided here. And the in route climb, landing lights off. I left them on. The landing gear is up and the flaps up check. Uh, fuel pump check off. So if you want to check that, you just go check off. 
so that's okay. So the autopilot's controlling our trim. So let's go uh, look at cruise now. Uh, so power up to 95%. Getting some rain here. So uh, we're going to auto complete that. A trim as required, enunciation. So these things are all good. So for a descent now. Power as required, air speeds as required, and trim as required. So the autopilot's going to take care. Uh, we're going to be controlling our power, just using our throttle, our air speeds the same. And the trim uh, is going to be looked after by the autopilot. So everything's looking good right here. So before landing, landing lights, I leave them on under 10,000 feet, just so you're more visible. Um, I could have had them turned off and turned them on at this point. Your fuel selector, check both on. Fuel pump, your landing gear down, three green. Uh, you want to make sure your parking brake's off. Doesn't accidentally get bumped and turned on or something. And trim is going to be handled by the autopilot. So let's just take a look at... Uh, those are the things we're going to do. But there's a few other things. Uh, so we've got some, we got some rain, which makes things interesting. Let's go back and look at our uh, multifunctional display screen and see how we're doing here. We're doing good. Right now, we're still at 4,000 feet. Here, we're going to be going down to 23 and 35. So we can set our altitude right now uh, for 3,500. So I'm just going to go Control 1 and set that to 3,500. Just use a small wheel. Get that to go down to 3,500. Now that's not going to activate until I press vertical speed. So you can get it set ahead of time. The other thing you want to check is just double check, make sure your nav frequency is set properly um, and your CDI is okay. We're going to monitor that. Just go to localizer one. Uh, we're going to get our heading lined up again here, just heading bug. Our barometric pressure, we're going to check that again and it just changed. So every time you reset that, it does uh, affect your altitude. So you want to have that accurate for landing. So we're in good shape here. you got another auxiliary gauge here as a backup, which tells you your uh, airspeed and also your altitude and your barometric pressure. So I'm just going to take a look out the window here. We've got a little bit of weather. Here's a good look at the aircraft from the outside. The pilot and co-pilot. That's you and your co-pilot. So we just threw through that rain cloud there, I guess. That was where the rain was coming from. Some of these aircraft are actually uh, maybe really in the area, depending on how Microsoft Flight Sim does it and little nav map. But let's take a look and see these aircraft here. Those are the ones that ATC is probably talking to. Uh, let's see what this one is. Uh, that one's at 40,000 feet. Let's see this one here. That one's at. 3,600, so 
These are, are well above us. Now we should turn and go to this waypoint here that I added because Microsoft Flight Team added it. And then we're probably not going to fly to this waypoint. Uh, it looks like we're going to fly directly to this one. But we'll see. They may do a few extra little um, waypoints. Uh, you can turn a compass on if you want. You can drag this map, by the way, but you can put a compass on around uh, your aircraft, which helps you with your heading if you want to set headings. For example, if you wanted to head it head to heading 225, uh, this little line would go that way when you set your heading, so it would help you line yourself up. Or, for example, when you get to here, there's your heading, magnetic 215. Not much wind, six knots. Uh, coming in at 205 on the compass, which is down around here. So you can take that compass off by clicking again. Now, I can center the aircraft again, which I'm going to do by hitting this. And it'll automatically center our aircraft now. And I'll downsize the screen. I want to watch and see what happens when we get to this waypoint here. Okay, so that's us. Okay, let's bring up a little nav map. So there's the transition right there. It looks like the aircraft is turning. following our flight plan very nicely and we don't need to descend until we get to this waypoint now I'll show you a little nav map again okay so let's show you the elevation view which comes in, in the so I'm going to use my mouse to scroll on this which stretches things out a bit then I'm going to drag this. So, uh, there's the top of descent right there after this waypoint, but we need to be uh, vertically. So, we can't be above that or we're going to miss the glide slope, which is at three degrees. So, we have to be in this feather, which is ILS feather here, in order to pick it up. So, here you see the uh, the ILS horizontal view, and here you see the um, approach mode um, vertical. Yeah, we're not here in ATC all the time. You just hear us talking to them. Why that happens, I'm not sure. So yeah, I clicked on that little uh, window there, and it brought up information on our aircraft. If you want to take a look at that, the DA-62, there's our altitude, our ground speed right now, our indicated speed, and there's the type of aircraft, and 
here's our airline, Mass Air. I just named it Mass Air myself. You can pick whatever name you want. There's our flight number, which you can select in your settings. Transponder right now code is 770077. And registration, that's something you can set yourself. The model, wingspan. So, you know, you get some data on the, on the aircraft. So uh, just one of the many things that's great about Microsoft Flight Center. And also little nav map combined. So there's the Arkansas River. The thing about uh, Microsoft Flight Center is you really don't know what, what you're flying over. It, of course, it makes sense. Uh, you can see the terrain out there, which is nice. But you wouldn't know that's the Arkansas River necessarily unless you're familiar with the area. But with little nav maps uh, synced to your flight, you can uh, find out exactly where you are, what you're flying over, uh, landmarks, etc. So there's another aircraft, and that's probably the one they asked us if we had it in sight. Um, we can look and see if we can see that on a uh, little nav map over there. That could be it right there, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the aircraft right there. Because it's just at 2,000. It's maybe going to land as well. Descend and maintain 3,500 feet Nessar 616. Yeah. So that's uh, Southwest Flight. And if you hold your mouse over it, you, you can get your information on that aircraft. Okay, we should be turning shortly, I think, towards this waypoint. This aircraft looks like it's just ahead of us. Here we are coming up to the waypoint here in the elevation view. Now here's where you gotta just double check to make sure everything's going right. So I'm gonna go back inside the aircraft. It's turning. Well, that's great. Let's see where it's going to. Hey, it looks like it might. I don't know if it's actually going to that waypoint, but in the little nav map world it is. Let's just take a look here and see where we're going here. I'm going to have to go back inside the aircraft here. Make sure. So, okay, we're making a big loop here into this waypoint. So we're not really going to this one, which we asked for, but we're going to go buy it. So you can see that's our next waypoint on our flight plan. And we have to be at 3,500 feet. So I don't know. They haven't asked us yet, but uh, we're not at top of descent yet. So if they don't ask us to go to uh, 3,500, I will do it myself. Because sometimes things just don't work. Oh, here we go. We, we did get the message. So, we're going to do it now. So, that's just a matter of hitting vertical speed and hit down. You don't have to go down too quickly. I'm going down 550 feet per minute. Yeah, sometimes they don't hear um, ATC or else uh, if I'm talking when I'm doing the video I miss it or else uh, there's interference with other aircraft it goes by so quick but uh, I kind of miss that probably if I played this back I'd hear it <laughs> so it's probably my uh, error there so let's take a look at things and see uh, once we get to 3,500, um, I am going to reset it for the next altitude, which is 23. Now, I'm just going to go back here. So 
So we've leveled off and this turns itself off. And you, you go back on to uh, altitude hold there, turns on. So let's just set this now to 23. for Getty and I can just vertical speed and down when we're ready to go there if ATC gives us that command so you can see where we are here coming around so I'm going to turn and head in so let's take a look at a little nav map You can turn on these little tracking dots here and it will show you uh, exactly the path you've taken and where you've deviated from. So this is basically uh, Microsoft Flight Plan is, has entered this and we entered this. Uh, we didn't even enter this one, we just were going to fly over to here. So It's nice to have if you want to see the actual course you took. So I'm going to downsize that, get ready for ATC to tell us to descend. Yeah, we need to be at that altitude right there, I believe, so let's go back. Just going to click on here and the uh, little nav map screen disappears. If you don't get nav map off, then your keyboards won't work and your mouse because it's it's uh, being controlled by a little nav map when it's up so if you want to use your keyboard and your mouse you have to turn off little nav map so I'm going to check the barometric pressure again and uh, I'm not sure if they told us to go down yeah so I'm going to start descending and see what they say we need to be down there remember because uh, let's just go back here and you can see um, we need to get down um, underneath. Uh, we need to get down into this feather here. So I'm going to descend. See if they say anything to us, ATC. They may. They may tell us we're below our altitude, but then very shortly thereafter tell us to descend. So I'm descending now. You see that right there. So what I'm going to have to do is put on approach. And this should go to LOC. It should change on its own. Pick up the localizer. You see me hitting the heading bug every now and then just to line it up with the aircraft, just in case I need to use heading mode. But if it doesn't change to LOC1, I'll just click on this, because we need to pick up that frequency right there. And we need to hit approach to pick up the other signal coming off, which will give us our vertical uh, slope so the localizer will line us up with the runway uh, to within a certain percentage and the approach signal will get us on a glide slope of three degrees hopefully into the runway so you have to make sure your barometric pressures correct I just hit it again in a change so it's changing constantly so we're going to have to put down our landing gear and our flaps, our flaps to landing. So we're going to have to go all the way down with the flaps because Tower on 118 decibel, there. 7 Nassair, 616. Adams Tower Nassair, 61613 miles southwest inbound ILS runway for right approach. So we just uh, picked up Clear uh, to land that new waypoint. Right Nassair, 616. So I'm thinking this should change to localizer once we get around here. Let me just 
Just get back out of here. Okay, let's just go up here. And I'll just back off a bit. Ah, so just switched over to the localizer. So now what I need to do is I need to put on approach. Right here, approach mode, click that, that's on. So now you see this green G came up and we've got a green uh, diamond here. You can just see the bottom half of it. It's going to start coming down. That's as we go along and intercept the glide slope. And I'll just show you again what's happening here. See, we have to get into this feather and right about there is where we'll pick up the uh, glide slope. We'll pick up that signal which should bring us down. So from now on I'm going to shut that down. Okay, let's focus on landing this thing. Pretty soon I'll be able to put down the landing gear and bring my speed down into that white zone there. So it's a good safe speed to bring down the flaps and the landing gear. So let's take a look outside here so you can see what we've got. So not very good visibility. So that's why uh, ILS approach is very nice. One of the most reliable types of approaches you can make in aviation uh, in bad weather. So when we pick up this diamond here, it's dropping right there. That's when we uh, hit the glide slope signal within the feather that I showed you, that green feather. So as soon as I get there, I'm going to put my landing gear down. And I've got to watch my airspeed here because we are, we are losing some airspeed. But there's about where we need to be for landing. So there's our descent stuff. Okay, so we picked up the glide slope. You can see we're going down now. So when we do that, we'll gain some speed. But now I can put down the landing gear. We should get those three green lights. And the landing gear is all down. And I need to do some flaps. So I just put the flaps down using my joystick. So I'm just going to watch my airspeed here. So if you look at the flaps, you can see right here, I've just got them part down now. I'm going to put them full down for landing. Okay, let's go outside and have a look at things. Alrighty, looking good. A little bit of rain coming down. And you can see we are right on track here for our nav one and our localizer. And full flaps, airspeed, watch your airspeed. We've got our landing lights on. And I am going to check the barometric pressure again. So we just watch this right here. See it just changed? Okay. You want to have that set properly just before landing. I'm just watching my airspeed here so I don't get into stall zone. It really fluctuates the airspeed, so you really have to stay on top of that. One minute it's up, one minute it's down. You can see we're descending nicely here. So this really is a beautiful aircraft to fly.
I edited out a little bit of this uh, flight just so it wasn't so long. Try not to leave out any important parts. So we're getting to see the runway now. There it is. You can see the lights flashing. You can see we're lined up quite nicely. Take you outside again. So just watch your airspeed. So I'll take the autopilot off just before we get there because it doesn't necessarily mean you're lined up perfectly with the runway. It just gets you really close. Sometimes you're right on the center line and other times you will be a little off left or right. But the glide slope should work okay. So I'm going to take the autopilot off now because it looked like it was taking us in a little too low. Now it might not have been, but it doesn't hurt to take the autopilot off near the end just to make sure you get things done right. So it did its job. So here we go. I'll just try and get your airspeed back and touch down as gently as you can. Just flare slightly. And just cut her back to idle. There we go. Okay. So a little light rain here today in Little Rock, Arkansas. And we're just getting a notification that we reached our waypoint there. And there are those blue markers that turned on that wouldn't turn on when we left. So you never know why things work and why they don't sometimes. So I'm just going to exit as soon as I can here and then see if we can get a parking spot. And we will take a look at the checklist for after landing. All right, looking good here. Going to one two one decimal nine or Nasser six one six. Okay, I'm just going to turn and stop here. Okay, so. Let's just uh, take a look at what we got here. Bring up the flaps. Alrighty, and we are going to, um, of course, those uh, taxi lights on. The landing lights, I don't think if it's a really foggy, uh, dark day, you could leave them on if you want. But anyway, I'm going to do the checklist and see what they say. After landing. Power levers to idle, which we have, so that's good. Uh, braking, uh, we did, we braked as required. Lights as required, so you know they're not saying to turn off the landing lights. So you could leave those on. Flaps are up, and the fuel pump. Uh, we got to turn that off. So let's just take fuel a pump LH slash RH off. Yeah, just Check make off. sure that's off. Now for parking. This is uh, once we get to parking. So let's just uh, let's just uh, turn on our landing lights just so we can see a little better. All right. So okay, I've got a parking checklist up here for shutting down the aircraft once you get to your parking spot. Unfortunately, something a little strange happened on the way on the taxiway. Uh, there was, I would say, uh, probably an elevation data error that resulted in a huge dip in the taxiway and the aircraft fell into it. Um, you can stick with us and watch it if you want. Uh, it's kind of comical actually. Uh, so I decided not to edit it out. But right here I'm just showing you that uh, little nav map can be brought up to find your way around the airport. Uh, those taxiways and your parking spot. There's also some stuff for securing the aircraft. I don't think you can actually have chocks or your PTOT probes. You can't cover them and mooring points for ropes dying down. That's probably 
something they do in the real world, but that's what you would do in this with this aircraft, one of the things you'd do for securing it. So uh, if you want to follow this along till the end, you'll, you'll see what happens. I've had this happen before, actually. So we're not going to make it to our parking spot. I mean, if anyone knows why this happens, uh, feel free to comment down below. I tried doing um, pushback to see if they could push me out of that situation, but uh, the aircraft is basically down in this little gorge, and once it um, gets into something like that, the aircraft tends to bury itself into the terrain. So. We're coming up pretty close here. We almost made it to parking, flight simmers. So you can see we're starting to get a little bit of rough terrain here. The aircraft is bobbing up and down a wee little bit. And boom! We are running into some elevation problems. So probably a disagreement with uh, what the elevations were for the that taxiway. <laughs> so we are embedded. And there's a little view of what it looks like. I don't know, has anyone else ever had that happen to them? All right, well, thank you very much for joining me, Flight Simmers. I'll catch you next time. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you feel like it.